Okay. So we're talking about history. Uh, you can see these documents here. These are from the Polo Hemp Mill that was built in Illinois. Um, my wife, Rachel, actually visited this place and talked to the person who is still in charge. Um, and they've preserved all these historical documents from the World War II era. So th these are actual documents that you can go, and if you, if you go check it out, they'll, they'll let you browse, thumb through them, take pictures, whatever you want. It's, uh, it's really great stuff. Um, so the company that, uh, that built all these mills for the World War II uh, war effort was called Warhemp Industries Incorporated. Uh, and they, they, start, they started the Polo Hemp Mill uh, in Ogle County from 1943 to 1944, and it was the pilot pro, or it was the pilot plant for the entire program, which uh, included the USDA creating a hemp division to direct the establishment of 42 hemp mills, 11 of which were in Illinois. Uh, it's interesting to note that Illinois had uh, over 25 percent of the mills, even though there were six states involved in the program. And during those years, especially in 1943, uh, 280,000 acres of hemp was grown across the U.S. in Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, Minnesota, and Wisconsin. And uh, these acres were mostly hand harvested and processed specifically for fiber. So that's that's our history in Illinois. Is uh, we have we have this uh, great legacy of processing for fiber. So we're going to talk some more about the basics of hemp. I'm sure all of you are rough familiar with hemp, but uh, I'd just like to go over sort of a quick picture of what I see. Uh, hemp, hemp is a variety of cannabis sativa that can be used for food, fiber, and medicine. Uh, it's one of the fastest growing plants and one of the first plants to be farmed over 10,000 years ago. And it's an annual that grows well in the Midwest United States. Uh, it grows like a row crop when you're doing it for seed or fiber, but much like a vegetable crop, when grown for flour, and there are many different varieties for each purpose that you intend to grow for. So let's talk about those varieties, or at least uh, the different styles of growing that you can do with hemp. So we're talking about growing hemp flour. I think a lot of people in this room and most of the people that we've talked to are very interested in growing hemp for flour. Uh, many Illinois farmers are interested, but they want to grow for uh, not only the high potential income that you can make off of it, but everyone expresses that they want to either advance research or make their own beneficial products for them for them to use themselves. So they, they have more of a, uh, an investment in it than just making money. And also small farmers in Illinois, uh, they recognize it as a crop that can scale up and or leverage into a fiber or seed operation so that uh, they can just start with a few initial acres and build from there. And um, something interesting about flour is there are national level variables at play uh, for the development of large scale production of flour here, uh, including oversupply and uh, regulatory hurdles from the FDA. Uh, if, if every state starts mass producing flour, we do risk an oversupply, which can affect a lot of people's investments. And so we'll move on to seed. This is a hemp field that looks like it's being grown for seed. You can see it's much more densely planted than the flower field. Um, but you can see it, it, most of the plants just develop straight up. They don't get a chance to bush out like in the last slide there. Uh, and there's no, there's no walking space in between these plants, unlike here. So when you grow for seed, uh, Illinois drummer soil is prime farmland for the production of grain. Uh, farmers in Illinois have experience and equipment that can easily adapt to growing hemp seed. Many of these potentially large hemp seed operations are lacking organic certification, which makes hemp seed production significantly more profitable. However, farmers are interested in converting their land from corn and soy to a sustainable rotation involving hemp and additional regenerative practices, which can include organic certification. And apart from that, seed markets may soon open up for the animal feed market, uh, which could give conventional farmers an outlet to still continue to grow hemp grain without that organic certification. So that's, that's seed. We'll talk about fiber. 
Here, here's a shot of a, a, a man standing next to a really tall hemp fiber field. Uh, this, this, not all varieties of hemp fiber get that tall, but they certainly can go 15, 16 feet. Um, and the fiber market is the most underrepresented in the industrial hemp picture right now. Uh, but some Illinois farmers are enthusiastic about growing it, including me. Uh, fiber processing infrastructure is virtually non-existent within the state and still weak in states that have had legal hemp for years. So I think that if we can develop large-scale hemp fiber chains, hemp fiber supply chains, we can help put Illinois at the forefront of the hemp industry. And an interesting thing about fiber is some amount of fiber is going to be grown regardless of the variety that you grow. So the more we grow, the more Illinois needs market opportunities for it. So let's talk a little bit about that market. Hemp industry analysis. Uh, right now, we have, we're lacking in a few things, but we also have some positive things that um, are, are looking good for the state. Uh, the things we're lacking in is a supply chain um, for dedicated intermediate processing. Farmers are going to need a place to immediately sell their raw baled hemp, and right now there is nothing. Uh, we're lacking in approved certified genetics and varietal research. Uh, there's not many seeds on the certified seed list right now that you can grow, and the sources for them are few and far between. Um, and we are lacking a widespread industrial hemp pilot program to fund research and development. Other states that legalized hemp years ago started with a pilot program that helped them sort of get their market off the ground. But in Illinois, they didn't really have that. They did a small amount of research and now they're just opening up the program for everyone. So now we're all doing the research. So th those are some of the things we're lacking, but some of the good things are there's interest in, from current value added producers to adopt hemp as a feedstock for new products. Uh, if we can come up with a way to process hemp uh, and make it so they can just feed it right into their process without changing anything, they would most certainly be willing to adopt those products based on them being new, environmentally friendly, is sustainable, et cetera. Uh, and another good thing is if we do start creating a large supply of hemp here in Illinois, uh, startup companies will flourish because they'll have a local supply of this uh, you know, very profitable material. Uh, another good thing is we have uh, interest from a lot of the institutions of higher education in the state for doing hemp research. Uh, Western Illinois, University of Illinois, Illinois State, Southern Illinois, and many community colleges around the state are all starting some form of hemp research this year or have been doing it for years. Um, and finally, people in Illinois are excited about hemp and the jobs it can help create in our state. Everyone we talk to is very, very excited about the hemp market. I think this room is a perfect illustration of that. Everyone here, you're going out and learning something new. You're excited for the new opportunity, and I, I thank all of you for being here. So with that out of the way, let's talk about the environment for a minute. This map shows total nitrogen being delivered into the water from agriculture in the Midwest. This goes into the Mississippi River and heads down to the Gulf of Mexico. Um, you, can, you can see Illinois is right, right in the center of it. And so I think it's up to us to sort of reverse this trend of oversaturation of nutrients running off into the water. So sustainable ecological agriculture requires a revival of some traditional methods in order to reverse environmental degradation. Cannabis hemp is arguably, if not obviously, the best choice for the purpose of productive environmental stewardship. Uh, hemp can give you from my, phyto remedi phyto remediation of contaminants in soil, reduction in chemical inputs, and increased biodiversity, while simultaneously providing a resilient source of food, fiber, and medicine. So if we start to grow hemp, hopefully we can reverse this and also create a resilient source of all the things that we need within our communities so we don't have to depend on outside sources for our lives. So are we there yet? Um, these are three steps that 
are going to have to happen. We will see these things happening in the next year or two. Uh, from 2019 to 2020, this, these things are going to happen. The Illinois Department of Agriculture is going to establish their rules and regs. Um, licensees will begin to research hemp and also to produce some hemp. And with that first batch of production, we'll see local development of value-added processes and goods. So if you're a beginner, uh, if you're new to the industry and you want to participate, or if you're already involved, consider keeping up with the IHGA. We have been developing resources and providing services and information for curious farmers and others who are just getting started. We develop content with an easy to understand approach that will continue to persist as we both grow together in this industry. So right now I'd like to ask you all to visit our website and subscribe. Our website is IllinoisHGA.com. You can become a member on the site and it's easy to participate in our discussions uh, on our forums. It's free and it's just starting. Uh, you can also book an initial consultation with us so that uh, we can get you the specific information you have uh, questions about and you can see what it's like to work with us. And that's it. Thank you all. I'm happy to answer any questions. Please, everyone, uh, find me or talk to me at the Q&A. Thanks again.